Greetings and welcome back to another cave devlog. Today I'm going to show you some new features that I've added to my pixel art RPG. Players can mine for ores, melt material into ingots and forge them into powerful pickaxes. People have been asking though when they'd be able to forge other tools such as hammers as well. One of the core philosophies of my game is to utilize the world over user interface. Games like Sea of Thieves do this well and designing a game around world interaction really gets you immersed as a player. So the question is, how can I let players pick the tool they want to craft without prompting them with a traditional user interface? Initially I tried to create a separate anvil for each type of tool. Although this would solve my problem, how exactly would an anvil influence the type exactly? An anvil is there to form material and different type of anvils do not really influence the intent of the blacksmith, what tool they want to forge. Another idea is to have some sort of casting form. You may know this from a lot of movies where mold material flows into these forms and voila, you have your ready to use weapon. This is an amazing cinema effect that is equally unrealistic. Many blacksmiths watching these movies may cry out loud as this is not how actually forging works. Then again, I do not want to build a forging simulator here, so I'll meet all you blacksmiths out there halfway. The player will be able to cast their material into a mold, but then they still must forge that blank into a proper tool with a hammer. Again, this is not exactly how tools and weapons are created, but for my game it works perfectly fine to establish smooth gameplay. We require one mold for hammers and one for pickaxes. During an earlier devlog I already implemented the concept of forge blanks. Those are currently auto-created once the player starts forging an ingot. This needs to change. I started by pixeling the molds and adding them as new item types. Next I had to change the furnace so it allows players to insert a mold into it. After a few nights of coding I managed to get this finally working. Molds can be picked up as regular items. I then can walk to a furnace and insert the mold into that newly created slot on the right. When I now smelt a material, it will automatically turn out to be ready to use as a blank. I can always loot the mold again to just smelt ingots if this is what the heart desires. This system is extremely flexible, meaning if I need to forge weapons and armor, I can simply introduce additional molds to support that. When starting the game for the first time, I want to encourage a sense of adventure to go out and discover these molds. By talking to the dwarven blacksmith, the player learns about his missing forging hammer, which I carefully placed randomly inside the world. Once the player returns the item to Thalnor, he will reward you with a key to his private stash. In the background, I'm using the dialogue manager add-on by Nathan Hort. The previous devlog showed how I used the dialogue add-on by Emilio. However, I decided to try out a different dialogue manager for now, as it allows me with its simple scripting to have a very lightweight approach to dialogues. I maintain one dialogue file per scene. In the file I define all sorts of dialogue the player can encounter, including the conversation with Thalnor about his missing hammer. I do track the items each character has, which allows me to perform a simple check to see if the player has collected the hammer. In that case, I can trigger a fitting response from Thalnor. Here you can also see that once Thalnor correctly obtained the hammer, he will provide the player with his key. That key itself is modeled inside Pandora as an item entity. Pandora is a new add-on for Godot 4 that I built specifically for this game. Watch out this channel for future content where I will walk you through the add-on in more detail. In the meantime, check out the video description for a link to Pandora. Once the key is looted, the player can head to Thanos' chest to open it. I put the two molds into the chest and specified the key so players first need to complete the quest before being able to obtain the forging molds I talked about earlier. Now that we looted the molds, we can insert them into the furnace, as shown before. Hang on a minute, I do not have enough copper ore to smelt myself a hammer blank. Fear not, my dear adventurer, I also reworked the way the furnace works and you can now smelt any material that is able to melt. 
earlier. I found this really crappy copper hammer that seems to be rather useless. I can use that rusty hammer as material to cast our new hammer blank. The way I achieved that is by describing any item inside Pandora with the type of material it consists of. For example, a copper pickaxe consists of copper. You get the idea. Rather than having a traditional recipe system, I can look up what an item is made of to look up a corresponding output by its material. This system allows me to be extremely flexible when it comes to melting items, without the need to define a dedicated recipe for any possible combination. So far we have been rather kind to Thalnor. What if the player decides though not to help the dwarf? Many games prevent the player from doing certain things, and you are often greeted with pop-ups explaining It's simply not possible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not? In other scenarios, the game simply refuses to let you do certain things, and to be honest, I find this quite boring. I mentioned the game Gothic many times already, and I love how this 22-year-old game established immersion. For example, you could just go into a building and rob people of their belongings. However, NPCs would remember that crime and become angry at you. This creates immersion and a believable world. To start, I modeled the concept of an annoyance meter. It is basically just a number that gets incremented whenever you annoy Thalnor. Once a certain threshold is reached, he even refuses to talk to you. You can also apologize to reset the meter. I accept your apology. I can control inside Dialogue Manager what dialogues should be played based on the annoyance level. For example, if the player is rude to Thalnor or refuses to help him, we simply increment the annoyance meter. Worst case, he completely stops talking to you. What is wrong with you? Once I introduce combat, NPCs may defend themselves with force, so watch out how you behave in front of other dwarfs. Eventually, I want to improve this by introducing a proper friendship enemy system, where you can even become best friends with certain NPCs. Stardew Valley is a massive inspiration here. A system like this would allow me to define friend and foe relationships between NPCs, making for an interesting system. The current version on itch.io is already two years old and people have been asking when they can finally play the new version. The answer is complicated. I hope to be able to upload the new version this year, but it depends on how fast we can add web support to the FMOGD extension. At the time of making this video, that is still blocked on the release of Godot 4.2, which finally unbreaks web support for GD extensions. Once that is fixed, I will upload the new version to itch.io for everyone to play. In the meantime, I will make the build available on my Discord server for people to try. Your feedback is greatly appreciated. I recently tried out Sea of Stars which is an enormously gorgeous game. The way they did the lighting really blew me away and I want to try to build a little prototype to achieve similar lighting visuals. I think my game could really benefit from a lighting system like that, considering there will be a lot of lava, hot material and torches in my game. The next big feature will be a combat system. Currently the caves are quite empty and lonely, so I want to add some creatures the player has to fight in order to survive. This deserves its own devlog though. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more game dev stuff. Godot tutorials and dwarven devlogs. See you next time. May your forge burn bright.